Today I am here with not only an interesting piano, but also a number of interesting things on top of the piano. Now, if you're interested in where I found this, I'll put the information for the store in the description of this video, but this piano isn't really for sale. It's more of an art piece. It's more of a decoration for the store because it's not exactly for sale. It has been restored, but simply because of the age of the piano and the way it was built back in the day, it doesn't really hold the tune very well anymore. And if I were to play it, you would hear that it is considerably out of tune. It would be a great piano for ragtime. If I knew a ragtime piece, I'd actually play it for you. But most anything I'd play wouldn't sound too hot in it. But basically, this is a Steinway from 1880s, 1870s, somewhere in that region. And it's absolutely beautiful. I've never quite seen a piano like this before. It's got all this beautiful wood on it. It's got these really neat, like, little grills here. These are empty behind them, and they're simply decorative holes to let sound out to increase the volume of the piano. And basically, the story behind this is it came from the Steinway factory like a normal upright of the time, but then it went to a cabinet maker who installed all of this beautiful stuff on it for a custom work for a customer. And then it sat around like that, and then at some point it was restored, and it's got brand new keys, and I assume all new action parts in it, and then they bought it and used it as a little demo. Uh, not really demo, but just decoration for the store. But what is uh, demonstrable on top of it is all of these. They use it as a little shelf for these neat action demos, and I kind of am partial to these because they're a unique probably hand-built things that you don't see too many of them, and these piano companies and action companies make these special for dealers, and so there's not really a whole lot of these out here, so it is kind of interesting to see some of these. So I thought I'd walk you guys through some of the interesting action parts and demos of little slices of pianos that they have up here. This one here is basically a Renner action. You can see the Renner logo on it, and that's also down here. Basically, this is the famous and the legendary Renner action. This is what it looks like. You'll find these in pianos from all kinds of price points, from the really, 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 really high-end pianos like Fazioli and Bosendorfer and Blutner. All of these high-end pianos use Renner actions. A lot of them, I know Fazioli as well as a number of other companies, will have Renner manufacture the parts to the piano company specifications, and they that's why each piano will have its own different kind of a feel. But a lot of the times, you can tell when a piano has a Renner action. It just has this certain substantial, wonderful feel, and this is is what the Renner Action Piano Demo looks like. If I take this down so that we just have a little bit more space, you'll see this one over here is basically the same thing, but it's got Bosendorfer branding on it because Bosendorfer, I think I just mentioned them a second ago, they're one of the other piano companies that use the Renner Action. It's manufactured to their specifications and um, Renner makes all the parts for them. So you've got a Bosendorfer logo here, you've also got one up here, and then on the back where you can't see it, it says Renner made in Germany. So this is basically the same thing as what you already saw, but with the Bosendorfer branding on it. It also has a wonderful substantial feel. This little tie up here, would have been cool if they put like some kind of a string or a, a tuning fork so it makes some kind of an attractive sound, but it just kind of goes bonk. But basically this is the action demo. It's designed to kind of show people what's happening inside of your piano when you play each and every note. And then this up here is like a little slice of the top of the piano. This would be the harp. Obviously this is a tuning pin, and then this would be the pin block of the piano. You can see just how little clearance there is when you go to slide the action in and out. That is all of the clearance you get when you go to move the action in and out of pianos. When you go to slide it out, it's really important when you're sliding the action out of a piano, you don't want to be pressing down the keys because then as you pull the action out, the hammer will snag on the back of the pin block. And if you're not careful, that can actually snap off the hammer. So when you're pulling an action out of the piano, you do want to be careful of that. But this is a kind of a cool demonstration that shows a little slice of a Bosendorfer piano. I'm going to put this right over here. This one is not by Bosendorfer. It's by Mason and Hamlin. And this is actually an interesting thing. I've seen three of these so far. And essentially what this is is it's demonstrating how important this, the crown of a soundboard is. As it sits right now, you can see that it's more or less flat. And you have this tuning fork on top of it that's kind of bolted to the top. I don't have a proper utensil to hit it with. Maybe I could use one of those hammers. But if I just hit it a few times to get it ringing. As it sits, it doesn't sound like anything. You can hear one of the really, really high harmonics of this tuning fork. And that's about it. As you increase the crown, hear that? The sound swells and it becomes present. And that is the importance of soundboard crown. So that was a little demonstration there of the Mason and Hamlin crown retention system. Now, not only is this supposed to be kind of an advertisement showing how important soundboard crown is, but it's also a bit of an advertisement for Mason and Hamlin's tension resonator system, which basically is a large metal disc under the piano that's got these beams going out to the side, and it helps hold the piano in shape and keep that crown 
in place for many, many years to come. It's a very, Mason Hamlin's the only uh, piano company that uses that, and it's a very important uh, feature. I've seen Mason Hamlin's from the early 1900s with the original soundboard that still sound absolutely wonderful. So it is a very important thing, and this kind of helps to demonstrate not only why the tension resonator is important, because they're talking about it up here on top, but also because of how important soundboard crown is. One thing I find kind of interesting is that this tuning fork here is actually tuned to 512, not 440 or 432. It's tuned to 512. <laughs> <clears throat> I assume that's because it works best with this size of wood, and they found that 512 really brought out the qualities of the wood, but kind of interesting. So here's something else that's kind of interesting. You actually already saw this in this video. This here is a little slice of a Bosendorfer piano, and I don't know if you can still see the Bosendorfer action demo behind me. You probably can. This is the same exact thing as this. So this is its own independent little thing, and it's basically the same thing. Basically, this is a little slice of a piano. This would be like where the keys would be, and then this here would be the harp, as you can see. Those tuning pins would go here. Underneath of it would be the pin block, and this is, as you're facing the piano, looking at it, this is the orientation that this would appear in the piano. And so you can see the a little tiny bit of the harp that obviously had to be custom made for this. This is just some kind of a front piece that's surprisingly resonant. It's kind of quiet, but it's almost like a little wood block. I mean, it is a wood block, but you know, the wood block instrument. And then you've got the little holes where the tuning pins go. So that's just kind of something interesting as well. And I believe the final thing that we have up here is actually a pair of, again, little slices of pianos. These are, again, made by Bosendorfer. I'll talk about this one first. Essentially what this is, is a slice out of the side of the piano. So I believe this would be the outside of the piano, the outside rim. It's finished in like what looks like beach, which I've never seen anyone make a piano out of that before, the rim. But I believe this is the outside, and it would sit like this. This is where the soundboard would be, and then this is all of the underlayment and stuff like that. You can see there's different chunks of wood blocks that are layered in together, and then this is the soundboard. Of course, that would extend out, and the strings would go over it and all that. This is the fancy wood that Bosendorfer likes to use on the inside of the pianos, on the inside of the rim, and that's what this looks like. This here is the same exact thing. It's, as you can see, this is the outside of the piano. This one here actually has a fancy wood on the outside. Soundboard looks slightly different. The underlayment looks slightly different, and it also has the Bosendorfer logo. You might have seen this, though. It says Yamaha on it, because, of course, Yamaha owns Bosendorfer. This other one, you probably noticed, doesn't have that. So this was actually made before Yamaha bought Bosendorfer, and this one was made after Yamaha bought Bosendorfer. And if you put both of them up side by side, let me line them up so they're as close to perfect as I can make them. You'll see that there's some slight differences. You'll see that the wood on the one on your right, my left, has aged a bit because it's older. The one on the right looks a little bit newer. And also you can see that there are some slight differences in the way the underlayment works. On the one on your right, it's slightly higher than the one on the left. The, the wood layers on this one, I think, are a little bit thinner. The soundboard also looks slightly different. I believe the material is a little bit different, and on this demo model, it's stamped with a Bosendorfer B, and there's also a random hole that this one doesn't have. But that's just an interesting look at some little piano demos, little slices of pianos, and also you can see that the piano that I'm standing in front of has a really unique feature that's this decorative top to it that I've never ever seen before on a piano. I see this and I think of like a reed organ or like an antique mantle for a fireplace, because a lot of times you'll see stuff like that on those, but never on a piano. Bit of a unique feature that makes that piano a little bit special. So I'm going to put all this back, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this little video. Bit of a different one. A look at a very old antique Steinway that's really beautiful to look at, and also just some kind of interesting action demos and other miscellaneous parts of pianos. Those went there. This went over here, and this, I think, went right about there. Something like that. Not quite perfect, but everything's back where it's supposed to be. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give it a like. If you want, you can go check out my channel. I've got lots of cool videos of pianos, organs, keyboards, and all kinds of other neat musical instruments. If you want, you might want to think about subscribing, and if you do subscribe, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.